Um, welcome to the, the Thatch pub in Cleonine. Thatch has great history in this building, uh, going back for several centuries. Uh, we don't actually know when the pub was built itself, according to old land maps and things like that. We know the building was here in the, in the 1700s, in the early 1700s, around 1718. And even my, uh, there's an old graveyard next door to the pub, and we can trace ancestors of mine back in that graveyard to 1725. It's always been in the family. I'm, I'm sixth generation and possibly seventh generation of a historian looking into it for me at the minute. I was born and reared in places. Just, uh, I love every bit of it. And we have a few uh, little quirky traditions in the Thatch that are unlike other pubs in the world. So one for argument's sake is this, as you might notice on the ceiling, we've all the cups. And how it all started years ago was lads when they'd finished their box of cigarettes, they'd make the cup and they'd be having bits with each other. They, and they'd see, as we say here, you lick it and stick it. As it happened from one time we had a with American tourists here and I said that's the woman and she walked off awfully offended. She took me up the wrong way but she thought I said something very rude to her. Uh, so what they used to do back then was lads when they'd be betting with each other, they'd give it a good lick and then they'd try to flick it off their thumb and stick it to the ceiling. And what happened then was people over the years started writing messages in, in the cups and it became a kind of a novelty and a tradition that you, you make your cup and you stick it to the ceiling and it's your kind of private message between you and the pub and no one else. Like uh, one of the oldest cups we have is this one back here. A couple from Melbourne from uh, 1960. The, there's a man on the wall. Behind me is uh, my great 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 grandfather John Walsh. John Walsh married my great 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 grandmother Mary Fleming. When he came here in the 1800s he set up a bakery in around the time of the famine when people had nothing uh, whatsoever. John actually set up a, a bakery next door where the ladies toilet is now and he used to actually cycle around the, the mountain in the cover of darkness and give bread to people because they had nothing. So and there was no money change hands, it was all barter. So he'd either um, they'd, they'd exchange something, might be a head of cabbage or maybe a day's work. I think a lot of the reason why John had so much reserves of grain and wheat at the time was because there was a RIC barracks next door to this building, Royal Irish Constabulary. The Queens would have made sure that all of our RIC men would have always been fed and we've always had plenty of food. The fact that they would have been coming here and doing their shopping here, uh, because this was also kind of a bit of a grocer's as well as a pub. And we actually have old ledgers from here. Um, might have a so this one here you'll see is 1879. I can never seem to find the one with the, <laughs> the constabulary on it. It was the one bill that was paid up every week. There you go, that's 1878, so you're right in the middle. Oh, a very hard time in Irish history. One thing that makes this unique that you can take a snapshot in time and go back. There was no back door into the building, so you, well there would have been, but it was private use. So anyone that came in for a drink would have come in the front door. And the area was only a very small barrier to that. My great grand aunts would have been the, the last two people that lived here, Margaret and Anne Walsh, and that would have been the, the late 50s. And there was no one living in the, in the house, in, in the building since. In fact, then it would have been a dwelling house for them, so they'd be here and they'd be doing the dinner on the day. And then they hear someone coming in and they just open up the window. Yeah, I'll be with you in a second. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I must tell you now that, that room, he's not oh, telling you, right? Was there, was a, there was a pillar there in the centre of that premises. A pole, there was. It was the first, <laughs> yeah. we were one of the first strip clubs in the world. <laughs> uh, and there used to be, a, right where you're standing, there used, there used to be a pole and my father had to take it out because there was wild locals and we had a few drinks down. He'd, he'd a habit of coming in and swinging around the pole. <laughs> and it didn't matter who the fuck was here, he, 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 was, he was going to do it, you know. And he'd go in and swing around the pole and he'd drive drinks flying all over the place. And didn't give up. He tried to walk the pole. Uh, it's safe to still there, you try to walk the pole. Oh. <laughs> ah, put yourself together now, boy. You guys are playing cards inside the nail. That room was the, the slope which you have up and down the country. But what a lot of people don't realise is the actual. The reason behind the snow was something very sexist in one sense that one time women were not allowed to drink in the main bar area with the men. In later years they were allowed to order one drink through the, the hole in the wall in the far corner. But uh, at earlier times they'd, they'd have, they wouldn't have been allowed to order a drink at all. But my great grand and they were two women that worked inside the counter. 
they would have still enforced the rule, which was mad, you know, that's... It's a small snapshot in time. When the harvest would have been going on back then, everyone helping each other, so all the local neighbours would come and they'd help with the harvest, and it's nice to see, and you still, we're lucky enough, we still have that kind of community aspect in rural Ireland today, that, and it's just great to see the, the way the community come around each other and protect each other, and even when my father passed away suddenly in 2018, people were brilliant that time, they couldn't do anything more for us, even when we didn't know what we were doing ourselves at times, because you'd be bewildered, people were just there, you know, and you, you never forget things like that, and that's... I think that's what makes this, this pub unique in another sense because it, it's, it's a community pub. It's not for us, it's, it's for us, yeah, it's, it's for our living, but at the end of the day, our, our, our role is here is, is to, make, to give, give a place for someone to come in and have a laugh, a joke, sometimes a cry if they need it. Um, and being the local county councillor, sometimes just come in and give out to me, which, which, hap which, hap which happens as well. And I'm, I I'm, well, I'm well used to that aspect of it, so. Um, thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you.